Eliza Lynch has been vilified in Latin American history as being a reckless courtesan who was responsible for the devastating Paraguayan War. Yet, was she really a bloodthirsty mistress, or in actual fact, a national hero? Born in Charville, Ireland, on the 19th of November 1833, Eliza Alice Lynch would grow up to be a tall, confident woman with golden blonde hair and a provocative smile. Her father, John Lynch, worked as a medical doctor, and her mother, Jane Elizabeth, was the daughter of a Royal Navy captain. Due to her father's work, the family did not face economic hardship and were supportive and loving. Yet, when Lynch was only 10 years old, she had to leave her small hometown as her family emigrated to Paris to escape the Great Irish Famine, which had ravished Irish society and taken the lives of many. A few years later, on the 3rd of June 1850, she married Xavier Quatrefage, a French officer who shortly afterwards was posted to Algeria. She accompanied him, but at 18 years of age, due to deteriorating health, she returned to Paris to live with her mother. Her first marriage was unsuccessful, and this may have been what caused her to go astray in the following years. On her return to Paris, she was introduced to the elite circle surrounding Princess Mathilde Bonaparte. This would lead her to the life of a courtesan amongst the wealthy Parisian elite. This erratic lifestyle would lead her to meet General Francisco Solano Lopez in 1854. He was the son of Carlos Antonio Lopez, the president of Paraguay. The young general was training with the French army to learn the ways of the greatest fighting force in the contemporary world. However, Eliza provided a much needed distraction and the pair soon began to elope, which preceded a romantic relationship, one that would alter the course of Paraguayan history forever. Lopez decided to take Eliza with him on his return home to Paraguay's capital city of Asuncion. Here, she would live in comfort under the support of her powerful partner. For whatever reason, however, they did not marry, and as a result of this, she was never fully accepted into the society of the elite in Asuncion. This was epitomized by the official annulment of her first marriage in 1857, which somehow saw her further alienated from the surrounding Paraguayan oligarchy and caused a general lack of acceptance. Notably, however, her initial difficulty in fitting in with her elite peers would soon evaporate as she began to introduce European customs to the elite of Paraguayan society. Eliza is in fact responsible for the first clubs and social events amongst the elite, and the introduction of protocol dinners with ambassadors of foreign nations. This served to improve diplomatic relations with foreign countries and is an example of her intuition. In 1862, Francisco Lopez succeeded his father as president. Unlike his father, Francisco was a far more temperamental man, but sadly, the decisions made during his presidency would cause devastating effects on his country and forever stain Eliza's image and reputation. During her time in Paraguay, Eliza lived in splendor and received the generous gifts, including property, jewels, and fancy clothing, all from Lopez. Her wealth skyrocketed, and as a result, many of Paraguay's elite started to envy her. Eliza Lynch had now risen to a position of significant standing and was labelled as the unofficial queen of Paraguay. She would spend the next decade as the most powerful woman in the country, yet this position would be used against her in the propaganda campaigns of her future enemies. In total, Eliza came to bear Lopez six children. These children would act to further cement her position as de facto first lady of Paraguay. The eldest of them, Juan Francisco Panchito Lopez, was born in Asuncion in 1855. The last child she would bear to Lopez, Leopoldo, was born in 1867 and died soon afterwards of dysentery as a result of the poor conditions brought about by the Paraguayan War. As we will come to learn, 
Eliza's life took a sharp turn due to the political actions of her husband. Yet, despite all the hardships, Eliza stood by her husband through to the bitter end. In 1864, Lopez declared war on Brazil in response to Brazil's own decision to invade Uruguay. As seen throughout the relationship, Eliza stood by her partner's decision, even though from the offset, it was apparent that Paraguay's armies would stand no opposition to the might of the Brazilian Empire. Accordingly, the Brazilian forces crushed Lopez's army and brought down havoc and destruction across the Paraguayan countryside. Nearing the end of the war, the country was in a state of despair, with catastrophic population loss. Some estimates suggest Paraguay's pre-war population of 525,000 was reduced to just 221,000, of which only 28,000 were men. During this period, the Paraguayan army was ill-equipped and small, but the greatest obstacle to its success was the structure of its leadership, in which Lopez held total control and failed to delegate power in a necessary way as to be efficient. This was one of Lopez's many failures. Once the bulk of the Paraguayan forces were overrun, Eliza stayed with her husband and the remaining band of their most loyal followers in the bitter guerrilla war which ensued. This guerrilla fighting lasted for 14 months and was crippling for the remaining Paraguayan army and the civilian population. Eliza experienced many hardships during this period, from her children dying from disease to very harsh and primal living conditions. Throughout this period of hardship, Eliza remained strong and loyal to Lopez and the cause. She would travel across the battlefields and the ruined countryside to raise morale amongst the troops and to try and put a strong face on for the crumbling Paraguayan army. She also volunteered on the front lines as a nurse to treat the wounded. She was part of a group known as Las Residentas, which was composed of the soldiers' wives, daughters and others. Also, this group would eventually serve as Lopez's personal guard. Eliza's involvement in helping the common soldiers, her long-lasting loyalty to her husband and the cause, and the resilience with which she faced the endless hardships during the end of the war is what gained her such great popularity amongst the Paraguayan people. This has led her to be considered a national hero in Paraguay, but only many years later. History, however, did not always portray her in this way, and it was due to a ruthless propaganda campaign run by the opposing forces in the war that she was vilified and deemed evil. They suggested she had been responsible for her husband's reckless decisions, which resulted in the destruction of Paraguay. They referenced her scandalous past in proposing she was simply an ambitious courtesan, who in her own greed had gone to such measures of ruining Paraguay to achieve wealth. They accused her of turning Lopez into a bloodthirsty and ambitious tyrant and dictator, but these were all myths. Despite this, some believed them, and for a time, she was dubbed the most vilified woman in Latin American history. The war came to an end on the 1st of March 1870 in the Battle of Cerro Corra. At this time, Lopez and his troops along with Eliza were hidden deep in the jungle. They were suffering shortages of basic supplies and it was clear they would not succeed. Once found by the Brazilian forces, the battle proved short, but even in defeat, the remaining Paraguayan forces proved courageous. During the battle, Lopez was separated from the remainder of his army and was accompanied by only a few officers. He had been wounded with a spear to the stomach and had been sliced by a sword in the side of his head. Then, while Lopez was alone with his aide, enemy soldiers approached, calling on him to surrender in exchange for his life. Lopez refused and shouted, Muero con mi patria, meaning, I die with my nation. He then attacked the enemy with his sword, but was soon restrained and disarmed. He died struggling to fight off the enemy as a result of his wounds. By this stage, nearly all the Paraguayan forces had been overrun, and in desperation, Juan Francisco, Eliza and Lopez's oldest son, 
who was only 15 years old, was declared as a colonel. Famously, on order to surrender by Brazilian officers, Juan replied, Un coronel paraguayano nunca se rinde, meaning, a Paraguayan colonel never surrenders. Then, before Eliza's eyes, he was shot several times to death. Eliza Lynch leapt on her son's bloodied corpse and declared, Esta es la civilización que han prometido, meaning, is this the civilization you have promised? Following defeat in battle, Eliza was allowed to bury the bodies of Lopez and their son, and did so with her bare hands. This is symbolic of the suffering she endured and the everlasting resilience with which she opposed it. The war is now described as the deadliest in South American history. 90% of the adult male population in Paraguay were killed, and the country would suffer long-term economic and social implications as a result. Despite all her acts of kindness and good deeds, some still criticize Eliza for standing by her husband and his ambitious aims, instead of trying to dissuade him from the devastating war. Although internationally, some consider Lopez a controversial figure who foolishly led his country into an unwinnable war which almost destroyed the nation. In Paraguay, he is considered a national hero who stood up against foreign rule and imperialism. Today, the 1st of March is a national holiday in Paraguay called Dia de los Héroes, or Heroes Day, which is held in honour of Lopez's memory. After Lopez's death and the Battle of Cerro Corre, Eliza and her family were taken prisoner. A provisional government was created within Paraguay, which was composed of Paraguayans who had fought against Lopez in the war. Eliza was banished from Paraguay, but was allowed to return again several years later to reclaim the property she had lost. However, shortly after her return, Eliza was then banished again, but this time permanently. She then travelled back to Paris, where she lived the remaining years of her life in obscurity. During her final years, she wrote a book about her life, with a focus on the suffering caused by the war. She died in Paris in July 1886, aged 52. Almost a hundred years after her death, her remains were exhumed and brought back to Paraguay. She was celebrated as a national hero, and the myths spread about her during the war by the enemy forces were debunked. Eliza Alice Lynch was a brave woman who proved not just her strength, but resilience in the face of hardship. She did not cause her husband to become a bloodthirsty dictator, but was instead less involved in political affairs and focused on the care of her children and others. During the war, she proved her loyalty and love to the Paraguayan people through her actions on the front line and in her support of her husband. She will forever remain a national hero of Paraguay, who pushed through tremendous hardships and difficulties. Thank you everyone for watching this video on Eliza Lynch. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, leave me a like and a comment down below. And if you're new, why not subscribe? I upload every single Tuesday, so be sure to have notifications turned on so you can get my videos as soon as they're uploaded. And if you have any suggestions, please send me an email, which is down in the description, or my Instagram page, which can also be found in the description. Anyway, that's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks!